What is up everybody? It is Wednesday, November 4th, 2015. This is Radio Tokyo and I am of course your host, Jonathan. Now, um, you know, okay, here's the truth. We try not to do a bunch of sad stories on the show, uh, but the first thing I want to bring up today is actually a little bit sad. Uh, there is a campaign going around. You may have heard about it. We actually talked about it on face on our Facebook page yesterday, uh, but it is known as the Force for Daniel campaign. Now, for those of you who do not know anything about this, and if you missed our Facebook post yesterday and you've somehow avoided the stories about this, uh, Force for Daniel is a Twitter camp. It's a, well, it's a social media campaign, rather, uh, using the hashtag Force for Daniel. Uh, it is because of a young man. He's he's, he's 32. He's, he's not so no, it's young, but anyway, 32 years old. Uh, he's from he lives in Spring, Texas. His name is Daniel Fleetwood and Daniel found out on Monday uh, that his lungs are 90% tumors uh, he was diagnosed in 2012 with spindle cell carcinoma which is a type of cancer that begins in the skin or somewhere in the tissues and that, that lines uh, the internal organs and it's all in his lungs uh, he two months ago, about two months ago he was given Two months to live and on Tuesday he had surpassed that by one day uh, which is still kind of amazing it, it, it was not it's not kind of it's very amazing to think about this uh, but he uh, like I said you know he was given two months to live and the re the whole thing that started the forest for Daniel campaign is that Daniel is a huge huge Star Wars fan uh, he has been a fan of it since he was about eight years old when his father took him to see Star Wars, and uh, he dreams, you know, about what will happen in the movies. Uh, he he loves the books. He enjoys writing fan fiction. You know, he has a lot of uh, Star Wars memorabilia in his home. And like I said, he he was given two months to live. And of course, you know, as everyone knows, uh, Star Wars: The Force Awakens is coming out on December eighteenth. And Daniel is afraid that he will not be here to see the movie. Uh, so his wife started the, the social media campaign trying to get Disney to allow Daniel to see the movie. Uh, it's gotten so much news that Mark Hamill and John Boyega, as, long as, as, as well as several other people who work on or are in Star Wars, are supporting it. It's... It would be a good thing, you know, uh, but like I said, you know, he's he, he may not be here to see the movie. So if you get a chance to uh, get on social media at any point in time, uh, the image that you're seeing right now it will be po it will it will it will be posted to our Facebook page later. Please feel free to copy it and please share it with the hashtag Force for Daniel because it would absolutely make this the, the, the this this man's life. Uh, he has a bucket list of everything, you know, he's wanted to do, and he's done everything except for, say, the last Star Wars film, so this is his dying wish, so if you get a chance, support the campaign, whether you know him or not, it doesn't matter, it's, it's, it's for a genuinely good cause, um, anyway, going on to, uh, some other kind of, oh, not, sad, but not exactly sad in the same sense, um, this week, of course, is BlizzCon. It will be starting Friday. It will go to the 6th to the 7th, you know, and everyone's all excited about, you know, the concerts and everything and what we're going to find out. Uh, but this year's BlizzCon is just slightly tainted. Now, this is not something new. There's always something going on around BlizzCon. Uh, of course, you know, we have the introduction of the Warcraft movie, uh, which, which, which is coming out next year. We're all excited for, for that. Uh, but that's not exactly, you know, what's ha what seems to be haunting this particular movie. Uh, I'm sorry, excuse me, not movie. Uh, what seems to be doing it is that um, Blizzard 
accidentally released their subscriber numbers for the third quarter. And it's not, it, it's good, but it's not good. Uh, as of September 2015, you know, which is the ending of the last quarter, uh, global subscribers were at 5,500,000. That's down 100,000 from what they were in the second quarter. Now, that's good. It is good. Uh, because it means that there's evidently a point where subscribers are going to get down to and they won't, they, they seemingly will not go any further. Now, whether they go up from here, no one can really predict. Uh, but Blizzard has announced that, uh, they feel that it was the patch 6.2.2 additions that kept people in the game. Uh, the problem with this is, is that Blizzard is no longer going to be announcing their subscriber numbers. They're switching over to player metrics. And the idea is that this is going to give a better idea of, you know, how many people are involved in playing the game. Now, of course, you know, again, the Warcraft movie is coming out next year. BlizzCon is, is, is this weekend. We're undoubtedly going to find out something that's going to happen uh, in the World of Warcraft. Uh, but does this mean, this is, this is just a hypothetical question here, does this mean uh, that something major is in the works for World of Warcraft? Now, of course, you know, it's, it's, ten, it's a 10-year-old game. It's, it's still immensely popular. You know, five and a half million people is, is nothing to joke about. Um, but uh, Blizzard, of course, you know, has Hearthstone. They have Overwatch coming up. They have Diablo. They have StarCraft. Uh, Activision Blizzard, you know, the, the overall corporation, has just bought King, uh, the, the King Gaming Company, which is a company responsible for games like Candy Crush, so that, that's being added in. There is a new uh, rock band, no, I'm sorry, Guitar Hero game coming out. I got confused there for a second, I'm sorry. Uh, it's coming out. Uh, there's a lot of cool stuff that's going on, and it's all coming, you know, from these th this group that Blizzard is involved in. Uh, so... Does that mean that all these other games, which, by the way, are essentially free-to-play games, are going to maybe influence World of Warcraft? Uh, if you keep track of other free-to-play type games, you know, Star Wars, The Old Republic, uh, Hearthstone, believe it or not, Diablo, everything else, you know, whether, whether it's made by Blizzard or not, if you look at those types of games, you see they talk about player metrics. They don't talk about subscriber numbers. Okay, uh, nearly MMO, nearly every MMO that is free to play right now deals with that same term, metrics. Uh, now, this may or may not indicate that World of Warcraft is going free to play. I don't know. I certainly cannot say, and I'm not going to um, try and, you know, essentially I'm not going to bet on it that it's going to. Uh, it is still a it is still a money earner for for Blizzard. Uh, it still has, like I said, a lot of people playing it, and there's evidently, you know, just from what I can gather, looking at the you know, subscriber numbers having gone up and down over the years, there does seem to be a steady group of players who have not stopped playing and may not quit playing. And of course, you know, with with uh, the Le the Legion expansion announced and the movie announced and BlizzCon and everything we're finding out, there might be you know, a, a reprisal of subscriptions. It might go back up to what it did at the beginning of Warlords of Draenor. It might go up to what it di did at Mist Pandaria. Hell, we might even see a return to the numbers during Wrath of the Lich King, which is... Now, that's the most hypothetical thing I've said so far, of course, but it could happen. It really could. You know, for a 10-year-old game that seems to have a uh, rather decent worldwide player base... Maybe that's what we're going towards. You know, we're going towards something that's going to be better. You know, more content will be put out. That way there is not a lull in content like there was during Mr. Pandora. You know, there was a 14-month a lull in, in, in gameplay. I mean, you know, for, for well over a year, people were stuck running Siege of Orgamar over and over and over again. There was nothing else to do. There was nothing new coming out. And, you know, e e even Cataclysm had some fairly new things that came out. It wasn't always the best content, but there was stuff put in. Wrath of the Lich King was almost non-stop. Burning Crusade 
had its content. They added some extra things in, you know. Misty Pandaria is the one where everything was just shoved in and then you were left there to play for over a year. Warlords of Draenor has had the initial content put in, uh, new content put in, and, I mean, it's continually added in. And with the time-walking dungeons and the new mounts and everything that they're adding in, maybe we're going to see more stuff coming in. Now, of course, you know, some of the complaints are that it's not always, you know, the greatest content, and that's true. It's not. Tanan Jungle, for example, as we've discussed before, is immensely boring. And if you're someone like me, you know, who has upwards of 20 characters that are 90 or higher, it gets tiresome doing the same thing over and over and over again. But it has led me and several others to be able to make more money in the game than we ever had before, because you can do these same things over and over and over again, you know, like your garrison missions and everything, and just earn money. So you have money to spend on buying uh, battle pets and mounts and uh, transmog sets and whatever the hell you want to spend it on. Uh, but like I said, you know, with Time Walking Dungeons coming out, there's going to be more added in, believe it or not. There's going to be, uh, I believe it's um, Pit of Saron for the Wrath of the Lich King one, and then um, Magister's Terrace, I think, for the Burning Crusade one, and then coming up at some point in time soon, there's going to be Cataclysm Dungeons added in, I, I, and I forget the whole list of those. Uh, but there's there's going to be a new mount that comes with it. Of course, you know, there's already the mounts that you can buy. There's the Dragon Hawk, and then there is the, uh, um, the, the Dead Horse, the, the, uh, uh Ironbound Wrath Charger, I think is what it's called, uh, that you can buy for Wrath of the Lich King content. Um, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, but there's going to be a new mount added in for it. It's going to be a, uh, Infinite Dragon, like a, a, an armored Infinite Dragon. It's a beautiful looking mount. It really is. Uh, that has a chance to drop for you individually off of every boss in every time walking dungeon. That's a good thing. That's liable to bring more players back in and keep those around who want to keep playing. And of course, you know, if you have uh, $20 to spend in real life, you can buy uh, the game time tokens and sell them on the auction house for using them yourself. And currently, they're about 35,000 gold, so that's a huge money maker. And that has helped to keep uh, player economies, you know, up and running uh, on my own server, which is admittedly very small. Uh, even though it's merged with another server that's roughly the same size, we have seen a lot of money flowing into the game economy because of reasons like that. Now, it may be, you know, that none, that, that, that none of this works. You know, World of Warcraft may go free to play, and it may be doomed, and it may, you know, lose popularity. But... I think, I genuinely think Blizzard has uh, started listening to the player base, and they're trying very hard to give us content that we will enjoy, and that they enjoy making, and it's released at a reasonable enough time that things will improve. Now, you know, a, a, an expansion a year is still going to cost a lot of money for a lot of players, you know, they're, they're still going to be about 40 to $60 each, you know, or unless you get the collector's editions, they're upwards of 100 and, but that's still going to keep people playing and again i'm not trying to forecast you know the doom of world of warcraft i enjoy playing it i love my guild uh i love getting on and role playing and running old content running raids you know sometimes even lfr you know I, and i like hunting rares and everything i have a lot of fun doing it and i know a lot of people who enjoy doing that so i'm glad to see that there may be some new things added to the game and if that means you know we lose subscribers, I can kind of live with that. I mean, it, it, it's something that's been going on for as long as I've been playing. But anyway, I'm rambling now. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, uh, check out the Force for Daniel campaign. Uh, check out the news from BlizzCon. Of course, this Friday, we Nick and I will be doing BlizzCon coverage. You know, of course, by the time we do our show, uh, that, you know, Friday afternoon, there's going to be some stuff go that's gone on. And I'm pretty sure... The, uh, World of, the, the, I almost said World of Warcraft movie, I'm sorry, the Warcraft movie, tra the official trailer, the, you know, the two, maybe two minutes, two, three minutes long trailer will be out, and we will have, of course, screenshots, we'll go through everything one by one, we'll talk about it, we'll talk about what's gone on at BlizzCon, and if Blizzard announces any changes to World of Warcraft, you know, of course, we'll bring them up, so check out our BlizzCon special this Friday, 
Uh, like us on Facebook to keep track of all of that. Uh, remember to like this video, comment on it, share it, subscribe to our channel, and we will talk to all of you Friday. Have a great day, and may the Force be with you.